Welcome to the channel. My name is Kubair. I'm a CICC licensed immigration consultant. And as promised yesterday in my live stream, we will do live Q&A because yesterday we just did not have the time. So here I am ready to answer all your questions as and how they may be. Uh, obviously, just small, few, short ground rules before we get started with the questions. Uh, <clears throat> if you're going to ask me an individual personal question in terms of your profile, and chances, I am sorry, but I will not be able to answer those questions. If you're going to ask me the chances for a specific score, again, uh, unfortunately, I can't answer that question because let me just be very clear. I have no inside information from IRCC. <clears throat> I do not know when the draws will happen. I don't have that kind of information. Yes, we can speculate and we're going to talk about it briefly in generic terms. Uh, but if you're going to ask me for a specific knock code, I can't answer that question. If you ask me for the specific knock code, specific scare score, and what are the chances? Unfortunately, I will not be able to answer the question, just like the one on your screen. I can't answer that question. Uh, 479, uh, this knock code, what is the chance? I, I don't know. You will have to follow the trends of the, uh, the, the the draws that have been happening, whether it's Ontario, whether it's Express Entry, you check your knock code, check whether you are eligible in the STEM category, check your eligible in the specific knock category. And from there on, you will be yourself be able to judge what your chances are. <clears throat> so this is the this is the only kind of a question which unfortunately I will not be able to answer because you know, okay, let's 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 take it from the top. Uh, what are the chances for anybody in express entry so very quickly before we get on to the question and answer individually let's let's take a look at the pool breakdown right uh let me make this a bit better so okay and as i scroll down into the pool okay so first of all this was the last express entry draw which was happened on which happened on the 13th of march Score was 430, number of invitations issued 975. This was a transport occupation uh, draw. This is the pool breakdown. Now, most of you would obviously have questions, one around STEM. I've already covered that yesterday. It's not that IRCC is against STEM. I mean, I do not know why people keep saying things like that. If they were against STEM, all they had to do was not have a stem category at all why have a stem category right just just for to, to please who so it's not that there is going to be no stem category or why there is no stem category first of all you have to be realistic and understanding there cannot be a category draw for each category every month or every two weeks it's not going to happen so be realistic about it the last stem category draw happened in december which was just three months yes just about three months back uh, if you are to look at the trends that will happen as far as express entry and category based draws are concerned, then they are primarily going to be, for example, one category draw might happen once in three to four months, except for French or Francophone category draws, because they have a separate quota that has been identified about 26,000 people for this year. And then as in, as in how we move forward, uh, except for French, all other five categories, you would see a draw happening once every few months. So just because the STEM category draw has not happened, it doesn't mean it will not happen. It's just that they probably have scheduled it for some time after a few weeks or months, right? So it will happen. So no point of stressing about it that at that point, at this point of time. Secondly, <clears throat> let's take a look at very quickly at the pool breakdown. Where is the pool breakdown? Here, uh, 601 to 1200, 987. 501 to 600, 10,573. Obviously, this pool breakdown is of the 11th of March. Then there was a, a draw which happened in Express Entry uh, on the 12th of March. Yes. And that was for the general draw. 2,850 invitations, score of 525. Now, what that would have done is it would have taken away all the 601 profiles, of course. It would have also taken away roughly 1,500 profiles from the 501 to uh, 600 category. So at that point of time, which is on the 11th of March, 12th of March, you roughly had about <clears throat> 9,000 people in the pool with score of 501 and above. Now, what are the chances? Like there are a lot of people who have this depressing view when the scores are going to stay for the whole year above 500. I unfortunately do not, or fortunately, do not share that kind of depressing view. I am forever hopeful. And in my opinion, uh, and only opinion, and my belief as well, uh, I believe all 500s should get cleared out. Now, obviously, I assumed or, or I anticipated that the 500s will get cleared out sooner. I thought probably by Feb, March, 
expecting uh, that the IRCC would continue regular size draws, but they did not. They changed the pattern. And, and obviously, they are the big daddies as far as <laughs> Express Entry con is concerned, and nobody knows better except them. Uh, therefore, they started the year with small incremental draws, right? 1,000, 1,100, 1,400, 1,600 kind of draws. And only now, this last draw that happened, they invited 2,850. We saw a similar pattern uh, immediately after the express entry draws were resumed in July of 2022. When they started the draws again, they started with a very small size increment, like 1500, 1500, 1750, then 2000. And that's how they incrementally increased the number of invitations. Uh, if that has anything to go with, then I would assume that they might actually start looking at uh, increasing the draws in a similar manner possible right we don't know but fingers crossed hoping for that so if 501 above is roughly 9000 plus people as of right now it won't be 9000 anymore because in the last two weeks there would have been some more people who would have gotten added into the pool so let's say 10,000 people in, in in the score 501 as of right now uh all it will take is about three draws at most if they start inviting 3500 people each uh, worst case, four draws if you add the incrementals or if they have a higher number of invitations, then again, three draws. But that's primarily what that will take. So even if they have to incrementally increase the number of invitations, if there's just small increments, 2850 last time, let's say 32, 3000 to 3250 in the next draw, which will hopefully should happen on, where's my calendar? Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday? You know, fingers crossed, Tuesday or Wednesday, that's when the next draw should happen. And if it happens on Tuesday, then you know for a fact there's going to be a category draw following it. If it happens on Wednesday, then you know there is no category draw happening except for the general draw. So whether it happens on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm anticipating that the invitation numbers would probably increase to 3,000, 30 to 50, or hopefully 3,500 as well. And with that, you will see the scores dropping down further. Now, obviously, this big chunk of 10,000 people is sitting between 500 and 515. That is where the biggest chunk of people is. So therefore, once this do start uh, starting, I mean, once they do start issuing invitations in a large number, that drop in scores will not be significant. You, it, it, it's it's going to be still smaller because there's a big chunk of people sitting in there. But once the 500s are cleared, then 490s, and then you know it's it's anybody's game from there on. But at this point of time, the only thing. We need to be hoping and praying and expecting and, and anticipating is the general draws with a regular size increments. Now, if that happens, then voila, things will look different. And then, of course, you yourself will know what the chances are for different scores at different knock codes. Now, as far as STEM category is concerned, same thing, similar synopsis with them as well. Uh, the last draw with STEM category happened was in December. Uh, the number of invitations issued were 5,900. I think we can quickly move to that one and see if we can pick that up. Uh, which one was it? December, December, December. It happened 8th of December. 5,900 invitations. This is where it is. STEM occupations, right? Uh, 481 was the score. Now, because they chose to invite 5,900 people, the score came down to 481. Uh, therefore, the next STEM category draw, we do not know how many invitations will be issued. If they choose to invite fewer number of people, let's say 2,000, 3,000 kind of a people, the score might not drop below 481. It might actually stay at 481 or might even be slightly higher than 481. That's one thing that you need to consider. Second, if they do, of course, increase the number of invitations, then, of course, the scores can go down and then that would be the way that you yourself can know the trend. Same thing for healthcare, same thing for transport, same thing for agriculture, same thing for skill trade. You can obviously know the chances and trends yourself. But this is basically how I would uh, calculate. I'm sure you can you can do that yourself as well. Right. So that's the, the basic and the big question as far as the STEM category draws, as far as the... Uh, trends as far as express entry is concerned and then very quickly let's talk about the recent announcement that sean fraser made and i'm sure there are going to be a few questions about that as well again i don't know the answer but let's let's speculate because we love speculating right
Mark Miller said that because of this large number of temporary residents in Canada and obviously not a very encouraging number of PR quotas, they are looking to look domestically towards making uh, the draws. Now, this will, as, this will be at the provincial level as well as the federal level. Now, this is what was stated. Nothing more. No other information was given. No other indication was given. Just the word domestic was used. And by the term domestic, I'm going to assume, <laughs> obviously, uh, I mean, yeah, I would assume that he's, he's referring to people who are inside Canada. Now, obviously, once that kind of uh, information uh, came out, then there were people who... Uh, came out on TikTok and on Instagram Reels and on YouTube and started claiming CEC draws are going to happen pronto. Well, we do not know when the CEC draws and if the CEC draws will happen. So, yes, definitely Mark Miller said domestic. Now, when I'm saying domestic, then obviously I'm going to assume it's inside Canada. And with that, I would actually be encouraged into thinking that this is referring to the CEC draws. Uh, the only caveat there is that they would want to continue with the category draws. And therefore, there is a very high possibility, high, not for sure, not certain. This is purely speculation. This is purely opinion. There is a possibility that you could see a category versus a class, or rather category plus a class draw. So you could have a STEM category draw for Canadian experience class, or you could have a STEM category draw. Uh, sorry, for, you could have um, a trade category draw or a healthcare category draw for Canadian experience class. At this point of time, for any category based draws, you do not need to be a Canadian experience class or, or you know anything specific. You could have work experience anywhere in the world. You do not need to have work experience only in Canada. A lot of people have this misconception that for category draws, you should have work experience in Canada. It is not so. You could have work experience anywhere in the world as long as it is for six months in the priority occupation and within the last three years continuous. So this is the only condition for a category based draws. But yes, I am quite encouraged to see that something of that sort was indicated and they are even thinking of CEC domestic draws. Now, it is said that the domestic draws uh, at, at the provincial level as well as at the federal level. So that is both encouraging because there are tons and tons of tons of people out there who are genuinely frustrated. We had this seminar yesterday in our office for the international students and uh, the uh, frustration at some times was, was quite evident because pathways are dwindling away and, and people without the employer job offer, you don't really have much of an option. The only province who obviously has something to offer without a job offer realistically and a good program and the best one at that is Ontario's human capital priorities. Now, Ontario's express entry or Ontario's human capital priorities without the job offer gives a skilled trade stream who have Ontario experience of one year, an option for them, even at low CRS score. Last year, they went right down to 250. And for everybody else who is in tech and in healthcare, there is that occupation, uh, there is that option of, of human capital priority stream without any job offer. And Ontario has really, really, really done a great uh, great service, I would say, in, in, for all the people who have been waiting by, by conducting a draw which was below 400 into 300 something. I don't remember the exact score, 380s or 360s for the healthcare, right? It gives so many of them such a huge option. So yeah, keep keep your eyes uh, on, on to the uh, Ontario draws if and as and when they happen. But this in a nutshell, my friends, is very quick synopsis of what the chances are in different categories, chances are in terms of different uh, PNPs, chances are in terms of express entry. And yes, STEM category draw will happen. And, and, and I absolutely believe it will happen. Uh, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, probably could be next week as well. Or if not next week, then maybe two weeks later. But definitely it's around the corner. Uh, that's the only thing I can say at this point of time. Right now, let's get to the question. For people who are joining us on Instagram, unfortunately, I, I, I can see a lot of questions, but I cannot take them because the questions that are reflected on my screen come primarily from the YouTube. So if you are asking me questions that if you are on uh, Instagram, then I would request you to hop on to our YouTube live stream and we can take questions from there on. Okay. First of all, <clears throat> you don't need to do a super chat. So please, you know, don't think that if you're doing a super chat, only those questions I can take. The only problem with super chats with me and my screen is that the super chats get highlighted and colored and they start reflecting 
and, and I, I feel more obligated because you know I, I hate the fact somebody's paid money for it and not getting an answer. But don't have to do super chats. Please don't do it because then I can freely take other questions as well. Thank you. I lived in Queensland. I have fines and demerit points after my license was suspended. Uh, there are no police or court cases and no DUI charges. Is it inadmissible or okay? Well, good question. Uh, first of all, for people who are applying for permanent residence, you will need police clearance. And when you are applying for police clearance from Australia and similarly from some other countries as well, please always refer to the IRCC website. Just do not assume that you need any kind of police clearance uh, that you might think is requirement. For example, for Australia, you need a police clearance, of course, from the Australian police. And in addition to that, you also need driving history, driving record for uh, Victoria and Queensland. Now, some of you would say that if I have not lived in that province, uh, in those states of, of Victoria or Queensland, then I don't need to give it to them. That's not true. You still need to provide a no driving record. Okay. Now, if you have a driving record, just as the person who is asking this question, you might have fines and demerit points. If those fines or demerit points or license suspension was for any reason other than DUI, you have no problem. It is DUI when it becomes a very, very big issue. So you are not inadmissible at all. You are absolutely fine. Uh, I would still suggest you to add any additional documentation that you might have for these uh, license suspensions so that IRCC has clarity. Uh, and therefore, you would be uh, fine to continue with your application. No problem there. Uh, nothing, no question there. Uh, received Ontario, but only six months expire ex ex oh, experience in the tech code. I, in total, two years in different knock core tier two in Canada qualifying under CEC. Can I apply? Uh, I honestly do not understand your question at all. Uh, I'm not sure what you are asking me, but if you have received a notification of interest from Ontario, then the primary two conditions or requirements are one that you should have a bachelor's degree or a bachelor's degree equivalency in Canada. That's the first condition. Second is that you should have at least one year of work experience in the primary knock code based on which you got invited in the human capital priority stream. And that work experience, if you're a federal skilled worker, then it should be or work experience is outside Canada should be for at least one year continuous uh, within the last five years. And if you're inside Canada and that work experience was inside Canada, then it could be cumulative and it has to be within the last three years. But you should have one year of work experience in the primary uh, knock code. And that is the condition or the requirement. If you do not have that work experience, then unfortunately you will not be eligible. But obviously, please always refer to the province's website for their eligibility criteria, just in case they updated something and I'm not aware of that. Received notification of interest from Ontario. Express entry profile is expiring on the May. Uh, on May the 25th, I have created Ontario application. Would you suggest creating a new profile and link it? Uh, no, just continue with your application. Or if you have been, so this, this I covered, actually I made a video about this yesterday as well. So at any point of time, you have received an Ontario notification of interest. And if your express entry profile expires during the process, or once your nomination application has been made, or even after receiving the nomination application, uh, nomination at any point of time, if your express entry profile expires, that's not a problem. Create a new one, send an email or a web form to Ontario, let them know that your previous uh, profile has expired, send them the letter that you get for the expiry of your profile. Also provide the new profile's uh, details along with the job code uh, number, and you should be good to go. The only, pro actually all the provinces will accept it. In most cases, the only province which does not accept is Alberta. So with Alberta, you have to be extremely, extremely careful. Please make sure that your profile doesn't become eligible and your profile doesn't expire before you get the IDA. You will lose your nomination. Xavier Uncle says, I was expecting STEM and adjusting my profile for Ontario. Shall I downgrade my profile below 480 for next Ontario human capital priorities? Okay, good question. Uh, I don't want to get caught on air saying this, but you know what? It's 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 first of all, can you lower your score to meet the Ontario's range? The answer is yes, you can. Just the way you can upgrade your scores. Similarly, you can downgrade your scores. A lot of people then say, oh, this is misrepresentation. This is not misrepresentation because I am not saying hide the information. I am not saying not to disclose information. What I am saying is not to claim the specific points. That's all that we are talking about. If you do not claim those points, you will obviously have a lower score and you will still disclose the information. 
do not hide any information do not hide your work experience do not hide your education don't do that you can simply choose to not claim points for it by saying no eca in your express entry profile if you want to take away your education points you can uh, remove work experience from your work history from your express entry profile these two things will reduce your scores in, in some cases if you have a spouse accompanying spouse you can add the spouse uh, and that would reduce your score in some cases you could take away your spouse's uh, language scores or the education uh, credential ECA assessment and that would also reduce your scores collectively you can do that but obviously you will disclose all this information as in you will disclose the uh, your, your spouse's education you will disclose your work experience in the personal history after you have received your idea so at no point of time you will hide the information and because you're not hiding the information this is not misrepresentation you are simply choosing to not claim the points and therefore yes you can absolutely do that oh. uh, i'm going to apply for postgraduate work permit in may both me and my spouses have a tier four job can i apply for her spouse open work permit without having job under tier three and above and if yes how thank you and happy holy well, happy holy to you as well. If you are working in Canada and if you have a postgraduate work permit, the condition for uh, applying for a spouse open work permit is that you are currently working at the time you make the application and you should have at least three pay stubs. That is the main criteria. That is the main condition for you to apply for your spouse open work permit. Uh, tier 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All these knock codes are acceptable as long as you're on a postgraduate work permit and you are eligible to apply whether it's full time whether it's part time it doesn't matter the knock code the tier code does not matter because you're in a postgraduate work permit you're in an open work permit you can apply for your spouse's work permit based on the fact that you are currently working you will still need to provide your employment letter the employment letter should include your name title job description job description is very important and your salary and your hours uh, you will need to provide your three recent pay stubs and that would make you eligible to apply for your spouse's open work permit. There is no condition or criteria for the tier code uh, to be at, at a certain level for a spouse open work permit for a person who is on a postgraduate work permit. Uh, got idea last week about the employment letter from Canadian employer by RCC or healthcare draw. How to respond since I neither claim points for arranged employment nor a CEC person really confusing. I am actually confused about your question. I, I don't really understand what you are asking me here. Uh, you got an ADR about employment letter from Canadian employer by IRCC under healthcare draw. How to respond since I neither claim points for arranged employment nor a CEC, nor a CEC person. I can't really give that answer to you, honestly speaking, because I do not know the details of your profile. I do not know what was included in your application. I do not know what information you were in, was included. I do not know what has prompted this ADR. Without that, if I was to say or give you any information or advice at this point of time, that would be incorrect. So, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm curious to know your thoughts if there might be another Ontario's international student draw for a job offer for a general stream. My opinion hardly matters in something of this sort. Ontario will be the one who will decide whether they will do another general draw in the international student stream or not. Well, uh, the last one that they did already had categories included in addition to the general draw they might continue with the similar factor or similar uh, process but i have absolutely no way of saying whether it will continue or not i'm on maternity leave right now and my job will resume in september what should i select an experience currently working or not working then you would be not working and you can always add a letter of explanation saying that you are on maternity leave you could also add a letter from your employer which says that they have authorized and approved your maternity leave uh, got notification of interest from Ontario. Should I submit transcripts along with ECA for degree completed in a foreign country or just ECA from West is sufficient? Last question is marriage certificate required for Ontario. Uh, please, yes, do provide your marriage certificate if obviously you're married. Number one. Number two, when you are submitting your documents for education, you have to first of all order a duplicate copy if you have a West report. That's the first condition. Second, you must provide a copy of your West. I also additionally provide the, the screenshot of the order of a duplicate copy that I have made for this. Definitely, please provide your education degrees certificates. Please definitely provide your mark sheets or transcripts. Whenever you are in doubt, please refer to the Ontario's website. Uh, let's take a look at. They have a very detailed document checklist. 
And let's just take this away, present my screen. If you go to the Ontario's website, oh, sorry, make this bigger, please. Yeah. If you go to the Ontario website, they have a Ontario's document checklist and they have it for each program. If you go to the human capital priority stream, it will tell you what documentation you need. In education documents, it says for a foreign degree, if you have completed your education outside of Canada, you need to obtain e ECA, you have to provide this. Uh, and you have to provide all other documents that have been listed in this section. So by all means, please absolutely provide every single document that has been listed in this particular list. And in addition to that, also always, always provide uh, if you're providing education documents, please always provide your copy of the degree, provide a copy of your mark sheet, because that will save you from any ambiguity if there might be as far as uh, Ontario is concerned. Uh, nothing there. <clears throat> I am working in Ontario. I have one year of experience. Can I apply for employer foreign worker stream on ICT work, work permit? The I mean, technically you can, if you're, even if you're on an ICT work permit, there is no problem for the employer job of employer job offer stream in Ontario. Two conditions. First one is that your employer obviously has to give you a job offer supporting your application for which they have to sign the employer form. So check with your employer if they will give it to you. Number one, number two, you should have two years of experience in that specific North code in which you're getting a job. Actually, there's a third condition. The third condition is that you should be, you should have your job offer should be at a median wage for that knock code in that job, geographic, geographic region. So please make sure you qualify under all these conditions before you make that application. <clears throat> My program is 1.5 years, which is one year post-grad and five months fast track with another post-grad. Will IRCC consider it as two years post-grad? Uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to ask me here. My program is 1.5 year, which is one year post-grad and five months fast track with another post-grad with IRCC consider it as two years post-grad. Well, if this education is outside Canada, then what IRCC will consider would be the ECA, credential assessment, right? And if this is inside Canada, then what IRCC will consider is what your credential states, whether it's a one-year program or a two-year program. That's what IRCC will consider. If I receive invite at 510 on a 495, 490 cutoff draw, can I add spouse later with a score of 493? Will IRCC reject? <laughs> is it called misrepresentation? Okay. First of all, let us let us understand what is misrepresentation. Misrepresentation is when you choose to deliberately mislead the visa officer into believing something else, which is not true otherwise or if you provide fraudulent information, or if you withhold information, which could otherwise uh, lead the visa officer to decide in a different manner about your application. All these are misrepresentations. Now, you are married, your spouse is a company, not a company, that you can change at any point of time, that is certainly not misrepresentation. Uh, you, your score is 510, you get invited at 490 cutoff. If you add your spouse, your score remains 493, 494, even 491. It's not a problem. You can still add your spouse. As long as your new score remains above the cutoff, you can make those changes in your profile. There's no issues even after receiving an idea. Let's take some questions which are not super chats because people are just going on and on and on with super chat and that is creating a big issue. Okay. Harbinder says, uh, EE profile by mistake selected same value. One year program in both the level of education fields Instead of masters, will it be a problem if I correct and submit it? No, it's not a problem. EE profile, you can change as many times as you want. You can make corrections as many times as you want. You can make updates. You can add information. You can delete information. It is not a problem. Uh, I do not know why some people make you feel or believe that once you have written something in Express Entry Profile, you can't. Yes, uh, if you are drastically making a change, for example, you first said that in the year 2019 to 2020, you were a doctor. Now you go back and say, uh, no, you were not a doctor, you were a carpenter. That, when it leaves the electronic footprint, and if IRCC flags it, can be an issue, right? I mean, how was this such a big variance? But what IRCC is most concerned about is your factor points at the time you receive your invitation and the the, the, the disclosures you have made at the time you submit your application. That's what they are most concerned about. That's what they are most 
uh, uh, going to be verifying and validating. So please, by all means, make as many changes as you want. There is no issues whatsoever. You mentioned my employer can email the employer form to Ontario International Student Stream, but I also have to input the info on my application. I don't have the info required. What can I do now? What I refer to, okay, so just a bit of a background here. In your uh, international student stream in Ontario and the employer job offer stream, there are two, uh, there is one big condition or requirement, and that is you to be able to provide your employer form to Ontario. Now, in most cases, employer do not wish to disclose that financial and the employee data that needs to be included on the employer form to the employee themselves. Uh, they're okay about giving that information to Ontario if it needs be. Now, what I recommended was just a recommendation. It is not something which Ontario will always accept. So please, if you proceed with that, always proceed with caution. Always proceed because considering that this can always be a risk. But if your employer is not providing it to you anyways, then it's a risk worth taking. It's a risk worth $1,500, $2,000, which you need to be aware of. That's the first thing. That's a disclaimer. First of all, it may work. It may not work. I cannot guarantee you. With me, I have tried it a couple of times and both times it did work. I wrote a very detailed explanation and that's where the employer form is asked for. I will put a very detailed explanation stating that my employer did not give me this form because they do not want to disclose it to me. However, the employer is more than happy to provide this document to you directly. They have already emailed it to you. This is the screenshot or snapshot of that email that has been sent to you. I request you to please consider that form that has been sent to you directly because the employer would not give it to me, but they are happy to give it to you directly. So use that. Uh, in two cases that I have done uh, with Ontario, both the times it was accepted because it was a logical explanation. Uh, in your case, you could try the same thing, but you always have to be aware that whenever you deviate from the standard requirement of the province, then it is always the province's discretion to accept it or not. Well, happy holy Vijay, at the time of first landing in Canada with a COPR from India, can one carry a lot of goods which he or she intends to sell in Canada by starting a business later as a permanent resident? <laughs> okay, good question. Uh, I don't know the answer. Well, the thing is, you can carry as many goods as you want. The purpose of those goods should be personal use. Uh, that is the logical understanding of any customs regulation. Whenever you are carrying goods which are actually meant for commercial purposes, then there should be and there could be uh, uh, a customs duty which is attached to it. Uh, how do you wish to proceed with this is entirely your call. Uh, I am not a customs, uh, my expertise is not within the customs authority or customs regulation. You can always refer back to CBSA asking for this information. Uh, but as long as the quantities that you are bring, bringing to Canada are within the personal use, con personal consumption uh, quantities, I don't think you'll have a problem. Uh, but if your intention itself is to start, uh, you know, using those goods for commercial purposes, then I would, you know, I, I would want to start my journey in Canada on a good foot, on a good note. I wouldn't want to start by misleading anybody or trying to take advantage or, or gaming the system. So just pay the duties the way they should be paid and, and live happily ever after. Uh, okay, my OMP non-express entry under employer job offer is 57. Do I have a chance? I am sorry, I do not know about the chances for any specific profile. You can always refer back to the province's website to see what the previous scores have been. Uh, you are awesome. Ah, I know, I know. I keep telling myself when I look at myself in the mirror. Sometimes I fool myself and sometimes I'm being truthful. <laughs> Do, does IRCC accept IELTS one skill retake results for PR as on their website before it was mentioned? Now it is not mentioned. Good question. I don't know the answer because just because it is not mentioned, it does not mean they will accept it. Yes, previously they were very clear categorically stating that they will not accept it. Uh, but this tells me that we can write a letter to IRCC and ask for that information. I shall do that. And once I get that information, I will share it with you. But at this point of time, I cannot say with absolute certainty whether IRCC will accept one take, one skill retake or not. Okay. Any problem for those claiming 50 points and express entry profile for LMIA exempt closed work permit job offer? Uh, no, there is no problem as long as you are eligible and you you are qualified to claim those 50 points. So if you are on an LMIA exempt closed work permit, the condition is that you should have work year, one year of work experience for the same employer in Canada on a closed work permit. 
and that your employer should be willing to give you a job offer, which states that this job offer is valid for one year after you become PR. If you qualify under both these conditions, then yes, absolutely, you can use this uh, points. No problem there. I have not got not notification of interest from Ontario. Uh, in last two draws, selected Prim Knock and all provinces, no knock. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't understand the question. But uh, if you have not been receiving a notification of interest from Ontario, well, could be a couple of reasons. One could be because you have received a notification of interest in the past and you chose not to proceed with it. Uh, or there could be some sort of, I don't know, your, maybe your primary knock code is not chosen correctly. Maybe you don't really have that work one year of work experience within the last five years. I do not know what that issue might be. Maybe take a look at your express entry profile. And in the best, the best solution for this is withdraw your express entry profile and recreate it. At least that way you are giving yourself a good chance for a next within the next draw. <laughs> My work overlaps with the priority and non-priority knock. What to do? Can I contact ESDC through online form to request their advice on knock selection? Oh boy, uh, I don't think ESDC, ESDC used to give advice on knock selection and uh, I, I don't think they're doing it anymore. They stopped doing it since they, start getting, they started getting a lot of uh, queries. Uh, I don't think they're doing it anymore. That's number one. Number two, even if ESDC gives you uh, uh, their advice, it's not necessary. IRCC will accept it. IRCC will still review your job roles and responsibilities and match it the way they do it based on the knock code. Uh, my suggestion is only to request your employer to mention only those job roles and responsibilities which match with the knock code that you are looking for. Okay, And then in addition to that, you can also use a knock comparison chart. I have made a video before. If you search on my video archive, you will find a, a video where I, which I did for knock comparison chart, whereby it's like it's like you try to play a match kind of a thing right on one side you can you can list all the knock duties that are listed on the knock database and on the other side you can list your corresponding duties for each of those knock duties to see to, to show basically this is how your uh, job work or your work experience matches that specific knock code it always works it has never been a problem this way you're trying to uh, be clear and you can you can show that or you can you, you're trying to establish uh, clarity as to why you have chosen the knock code and, and remove any ambiguity that might be there so that could work one year work permit left connection offered can i take it or consider it skill uh, i have no idea what you're asking me here connection offered knock b can i take it consider it Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't really understand the question there, but as far as, uh, I mean, I can't tell you to take something or not to take something in terms of whether it is considered skill trade for better CRS points or not. As long as you're eligible, you have a priority knock code and you have work experience in it, you can absolutely you know, go with it. Ontario international student in COVID did not attend college for the whole school. Should I select not physically attended college or location of study? Uh, did not attend college for the whole course. Should I select not physically attended college or location of study? Again, uh, yes, if you did not attend the college, you can absolutely mention that and you can add a letter of explanation to explain. Honestly, I'm not able to understand what you're saying. So you can always add a letter of explanation to make to provide clarity as to what the, the situation there was. Does IRCC focus only on tech knock in STEM or all other 21, 22 knock minus civil engineer. No, IRCC is very, very clear. Uh, sorry, Ontario is very, very clear. They, no, are you asking me IRCC or Ontario? IRCC focuses on, well, let's see, how many knock codes are there? In, uh, okay, let's see. So this is IRCC's website on the category-based draws. If I click on STEM, okay, uh, it gives me total of 24 knock codes. Architects are here, civil engineers are here, uh, IT, IT knock codes are here, architects, architecture and science managers are here. Uh, 
Who else is here? Engineering managers are here. Electronic engineers are here. Uh, land surveyors are here. Again, architects are here. Mathematicians are here. Metallurgical engineers are here. Nature and applied science programmers and consultants are here. Yeah, so yeah. So whenever IRCC would conduct a STEM category draw, all these lock codes would be included within the uh, within the CRS score that they would announce. So there is no problem with that at all. So yeah, I mean, it's not only IT knock codes, they include all these 24 knock codes whenever they would conduct a draw. Uh, 11 months of knock B experience started job in knock, which is part of healthcare. If I submitted EE profile now, once done with six months with healthcare, can profile pick automatically? You know, I mean, I wish we could sort of write it a bit more with more clarity so that I can understand what you're saying. 11 months of NOC B experience started job in NOC, which is part of healthcare. If I submitted a e profile now, can once done with six months with healthcare. Okay, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not able to understand what you're saying, but let me clarify. In order to be eligible in a category based draws with express entry, your occupation should be one of the occupations that have been listed in the priority occupations. That's the first thing. This occupation you should have work experience of at least six continuous months six months continuous work experience inside canada outside canada doesn't matter and this work experience should be within the last three years if you have this work experience within the last three years uh, you have six months of experience it's a priority knock code please mention it in your work history it doesn't have to be a primary knock code as long as it is six months it is continuous within the last three years it is in your work history you would get invited uh, short Indian experience with title as associate. A title is not as per NOC. Will it work for e -E Ontario Tech or should I change it? I can add three to four job responsibilities. Well, the condition or the criteria for a NOC code is that your job roles and responsibilities should match. If there is a bit of a difference or variance in your NOC code, that doesn't really matter. Can you make the changes? Yes, you can. There is no problem at all. Again, you already disclosed that work experience, which is good. Even if the title is a bit different, but your knock code matches with the job roles and responsibilities, you are good to go. My work permit is expiring in June. Is there any way my employer, public company can help me for a work permit extension without LMIA? I'm from Nepal. If yes, please advise. In some cases, some companies may be able to apply for a LMIA exempt work permit, for example, under code C20, reciprocal arrangements. Uh, in most cases, not. In some cases, maybe. But I think the best person to, ex to, to give you that answer would be your employer. Regarding Queensland traffic record, it's not just suspension, but I drove after driving license suspension. Is it inadmissible? Uh, no, there is no problem with the inadmissibility there. Inadmissibility would only happen in case of criminality, serious criminality, security, human rights, uh, human rights violation, etc., etc., uh, this would not come under inadmissibility. So, yeah, I, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, received Ontario Human Capital Tech notification of interest. My primary knock code experience is not within the last five years. Can I change it to new knock, which was in the list of invited ones? Of the same draw, I have experience in both. My primary knock code is not within the last five years. Can I change it to the new? Yes, you can do that. But please make sure you add a detailed letter of explanation as to why have you changed your knock code. That is very, very important. And always keep in mind, whenever you make these kind of changes, it remains then Ontario's officer's discretion to accept your application or not. Kuldeep, thank you. Jay, sorry. Sumit. Uh, do spouse also need to do VES for their education for Ontario's human capital priorities stream? Uh, nope, that is not a requirement from Ontario. Uh, but if you have claimed those points in your express entry profile, uh, then obviously you need the ECA for that education as well. Ankita, sorry. Uh, Manish says, I'm on postgraduate work permit. If I have a part-time job, can I still sponsor my spouse? Yes, you can. You There is no problem with that. I do have a CRS score of 448 and I'm working as a tool and die maker where I missed two Ontario draw due to 424 cutoff. Should I wait for one more draw or should I lower my CRS score by taking another IELTS? Uh, I would have I would have dropped my, my, my CRS by now to take advantage of the Ontario's draw. If you're waiting for the IRCC's draw, 
maybe sticking for some more time might help. Or wherever the next uh, IRCC's draw would happen, whenever they do it, the skill trade, I think it's also around the corner some point of time, then that would also give you an idea as to what Ontario's higher cutoff would be. But if I was you, I would by now, I would, would have already done a new uh, language test to reduce the scores. I'm a software engineer by profession. I came to Nova Scotia, Canada for two years, post bachelorate program. Which province would be the best for me and what should I target? Uh, I am sorry, I cannot, you know, I, I cannot tell you what province would be best for you or not for you. Uh, this is something which you will have to check on the individual provinces website, check their PMP programs, check their criteria. Uh, in most cases, I mean, you are in, in Nova Scotia, you can look at their express entry stream. Get one year of work experience in Nova Scotia. You might be eligible to apply in Nova Scotia. Otherwise, you might need a job offer if you go to a different province. Also depends on your express entry scores, depends on whether you can get a job offer from a different employer or not. So, so many variables, so many factors. You can only check individual provincial website to find out whether you're eligible or not. Uh, CEC happened as hinted. What is the expected score? I don't know. It will all depend on how many invitations they choose to invite. My wife is working on tier four and is applying her postgraduate work permit. Can I apply for to extend spouse open work permit at the same point of time? Yes, you can. There is no problem in doing that. Your wife is working. Uh, please, please, please make sure that you add her employment letter with job roles and responsibilities and pay stubs, recent pay stubs in your application for extension of spouse open work permit. A lot of times people make that mistake. Their spouse is applying for postgraduate work permit. They also apply for their extension of spouse open work permit, but they forget to add the spouse's uh, work experience document or employment letter or work job roles and responsibilities letter and the pay stubs. And therefore, their work permit gets refused. So this is a very important document. Please don't forget. But to answer your question, yes, you're eligible. There's no problem. Cap for temporary foreign workers, 30% to 20%. Can this effect for the LMI application before May 1st and not approval before 1st May? What does 20% cap mean? Okay. First of all, the temporary foreign workers, 30% to 20% is not the cap on the number of workers. That is a cap for the low wage LMI applications where the employer has to prove how many percentage of their total employees are temporary foreign workers. That cap has been reduced to 20%. Uh, if your LMI application is approved before 1st of May, then this does not apply to you. If it is uh, processed and approved after 1st of May, then the caps do apply and the uh, validity will also apply. So the new validity, if the LMI is approved after the 1st of May, would now be six months. Uh, thank you. Sairam says, I am PR, got married early March, planning to file spousal PR application. Can you please come on to another spousal PR application timelines? Well, the best place to see the timelines would be the IRCC website for the processing times from that individual country, specifically for the outland PR processing. Uh, they can vary anywhere from 10 to 16 months for an outland PR application for spousal sponsorship uh, and can vary depending on how you prepare your documentation, what documentation you're providing and where it is being processed. I have seen fast processing as, as quickly as five months in the recent times as well. Got notification of interest in the last tech draw with 468. Uh, but my highest education is Canadian three years advanced diploma. Should I apply or not? Uh, unfortunately, you will not be eligible because the minimum requirement for human capital priorities is a bachelor's degree. If you do not have a bachelor's degree or its equivalency as a bachelor's degree, then you will not be eligible under the human capital priority stream. Uh, does IRCC accept one skill retake? I have just answered in, I mean, there is no confirmation from IRCC that they do accept one skill retake. At this point of time, I would say, I, I cannot say with any certainty whether they do accept it or not. I do have a CRS score of 448. I'm working as a tool. Oh, we just did this, right? Uh, Jay, thank you. Drool says, what is the processing time for Francophone work permit documents required and for processing time to extend work permit? And CLC level in front. Again, as I'm saying, for the processing times, kindly do refer to the IRCC website for the processing times, depending on where you are making that application. If it is inside Canada, the work permit processing times can easily vary between three to four months. Uh, as far as the documentation is required, you need to have the job offer. The employer has to pay the employer compliance fee, gives you the job offer. You have to provide that you are eligible to perform that job. You have the qualification and the background, and you have to prove your language skills scores of NCLC 5. 
okay we guys please do not do any more super chats because i will not take any more super chats right that's the first thing number two i have only 10 more minutes before i can finish so i will not be able to complete all the questions do not do super chats because then you will be feeling quite upset about it so please do not do any more super chats okay i've lost that question Wage is slightly below median wage for an in-demand Ontario employer. After adding shift premium, am I eligible? Can I add it? No, adding shift premium does not make you eligible. The job offer has to be very, very clear and it should match the median wage. Uh, SH, I will not be taking your question. I've just said I will not be taking any more super chats. Sorry. Uh, Lake Raj, I have LMIA based closed work permit. My LMIA got expired. I still, I and still I have work permit until October. Am I still eligible to claim 50 points in express entry? As long as your work permit is valid, the closed work permit is valid, and it was based on the LMIA, then yes, you would be able to claim the 50 points. Do CEC candidates require to show proof of funds? Uh, nope. If you are Canadian experience class, then you are not required to show proof of funds. You can either mention it as zero or you can add a letter of explanation which says that I am a Canadian experience class and therefore I am exempt from proof of funds. I studied online during COVID asking what is your location of study? Should I select not physically attending the college where I would have gone if there were no COVID? Uh, you can mention your physical location wherever you were present at the time you attended the college. And as I said, you can add a letter of explanation explaining what the conditions were at that point of time and under which conditions you completed your education. I gained work experience after getting study visa, but I didn't mention this experience while applying for work permit. Can I add this now in my PR application to claim points? Well, this would be a clear case of misrepresentation because you did not disclose it earlier and now you are disclosing it means uh, there was no reason for you to not disclose it earlier so because you sh if you had already showed this in your study permit application that would have been fine that you were it was ongoing then in your work permit application you chose not to disclose it now why would you choose to do it because it is helping your application so therefore it is a risk in some cases people might get away with it in some cases it might get flagged uh, and that is a risk. You have to decide whether you wish to take or not. I have received my prof the provincial attestation letter for a PG diploma. They do accept, they do not accept fee payment for full year. If Is it fine if I apply without GIC under non-SDS? Yes, absolutely. You can apply under non-SDS. The chances would depend based on the documentation you provide and whether you are able to establish that you would have strong ties to your home country. Will my LMIA be valid for 50 points after six months if I get closed work permit for that employer? Yes, it would be valid for as long as the validity of your work permit is. I have two months of paid vacation back from home during my study moment. Can I add these two months to my foreign work experience? Huh? I have two months of paid vacation back from home during my study permit. I, I, I don't know what you mean, but if it is a vacation period, then obviously you can't add that as part of your work experience. Uh, yeah, I, I, honestly, I don't understand what you're asking me and I don't, I don't see the context here, so I can't really advise you accordingly. I have my IKS, ICAS while processing and I have the original file number with me. Can I use this file number for creating Express Profile, Express Entry Profile? No, you cannot. You need to wait till you get your equivalency and only then because your profile, your, your report will have a date and that date is required in your Express Entry Profile. So please wait to get it. I applied for visitor record in Jan currently in India. Can I travel back to Canada once visitor record is approved? I already have a TRV on the passport. Uh, your visitor record means nothing at all if you've already left Canada. Visitor record is for you to give, to give you status while you are in Canada. If you are outside Canada, you obviously do not have status in Canada. So now when you have a TRV, you go to Canada with that TRV, you will be conferred upon a status of visitor at that point of time. So you don't need a visitor record anymore. Uh, I have gained work experience after getting study visa, but I didn't. Oh, we did this, right? Uh, I have two years of experience. I have two years of experience in Canada as software engineer offering GTS LMIA. Am I eligible for 50 points in express entry? Well, if your employer has given you a GTS LMIA, then yes, you are eligible for the 50 points. Absolutely. Uh, you will still need to add a job offer which says that this job offer is valid for one year after you become PR. But yes, you are eligible with 50, for 50 points. <laughs> 
How to lower the score for Ontario human capital priorities rows? Can I put lower IELTS at a profile creation and submit a higher score later? No, no, you cannot do that. You need to have a lower IELTS score to put that. You cannot just think of a lower score and put that and then change it later on. That is misrepresentation. That is you trying to game the system. Don't do that. Uh, if you want to lower the score, then genuinely have a lower IELTS scores if that is what is going to make the difference. Uh, no, unfortunately, you cannot use your profile number just to create the express entry profile. We just already spoke about that. Okay, uh, and for people who have added their questions after I already said I will not take any more questions, unfortunately, I will not be able to answer your questions. Uh, you know, these, these streams can continue and obviously the questions don't end. And I know there are too many questions and obviously I will not be able to answer all of them. So. After the stream ends, because I cannot take any more questions, I got to go somewhere. Uh, please do post your questions in the comments. I will try and come back and, and answer to as many questions as I can. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. It was a pleasure doing this once again. And hopefully we'll do more of these. Uh, thank you so much. And I shall see you next time.